Forced him. <laughs> we forced him in. Hanging out and bugging the shit out of us. <laughs> the band. Yeah, it's one of those like we like. I think we had talked about this before. I I think we kind of always it was it was always in the back of our mind that one day he'd probably be in the band, especially if he worked as hard as he did. You and know, then like, when he moved to drums, we over time just kind of missed having keyboards in the yeah. band. Yeah, we always we always missed it, and then once we started working on the record, when we were first doing it, and I was adding the keyboard lines. Um, we were probably we, we had talked about just having the keyboards low in the mix that way it wasn't such a dominant thing or whatever but then we ended up you know having it up, having them up there with everything else in the mix and um so we're like fuck well we got to figure something out and, you know he'd, he'd been playing you know we'd always see him playing when we'd be practicing and we'd go take a break and we'd hear him playing and so yeah we just kind of knew that like he said yeah, that the timing was right you know mm -hmm. and so we yeah, schooled the shit out of him and practiced every single day for hours and hours and yeah, hours and just, you know. Handed him the CD so that when we weren't there, he could listen to it over and over again. Yeah. <laughs> what was your first show and what was it like? My first show was La Parada in El Paso and it was it was pretty crazy. It was, yeah, I only had like, was it like two weeks to learn all the shit. That. that was your first show. And then South by Southwest. Yeah. yeah. First that was like, that's a pretty big gig for <laughs> your second show yeah right <laughs> um so when you guys were writing did you have matt Embry in mind for a guest appearance or did that just come about later on it came about later on yeah because we had already started we had started working on it and then when we went out on the road with them i guess we had already had like five songs and uh when we, you know, after touring with them for those two weeks, we all, you know, we we're like, man, his, you know, his voice is great. We should use him on the on the next record. And then uh, we already knew what song we had in mind. Then from that point, it was just kind of, uh, you know, putting it together yeah, and after, find it, figuring out exactly where we would put him and how to work around that. After he he wrote like the vocal melody, we tried to do it ourselves, and we we're just like, yeah. nope. <laughs> <laughs> Uh-uh. <laughs> so then we sent it to him, and, and he, yeah, he did awesome. He yeah. Tweaked it a little bit, added a harmony, yeah, and, you know, sent it back to the internet or whatever, and it was, it was amazing. Yeah, yeah. We were all very surprised when we got it yeah. back. Yeah, like, basically wow. the first time we heard our stuff with vocals. With right? vocals yeah. on it, yeah. Cool. With, like, some, uh, well, like, with someone, you know, that could, because Sonny did after, recorded after him. Right? No. Sonny oh, she did first. the first part? Mm -hmm. Okay. When you guys look back on that tour with uh, with our expanets, the Dredge tour, how has this band evolved over the years? Mm. Um, I feel like we've gotten tighter. Yeah, I think better tighter, jokes. but <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, and I I think too we just learn uh, you know have learned how to uh, yeah just gotten tighter and play better you know live or you know, and and help us. Uh, get be better focused. yeah be more focused because we definitely back then even even back then we were playing some of these songs that are on this record but it's now after having actually finished it and you know arranged everything and cut everything out and all that type of stuff that the record you know basically taught us how to how to um yeah like the, the record to us is is concise or whatever even though our playing sometimes live we would extend stuff and that type of thing, whereas now we can still jam, but still keep it nice and tight, mm -hmm. like yeah. the way that the record is, you know, that's basically where we learned it from, you know, after having finished it. Is it weird listening back to the old record? Yeah. 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 <laughs> Definitely. Sometimes I'm like, I don't like it. <laughs> and, I'll hear, and then I'll hear a song, and I'm like, oh, oh man, I wish we could redo this one. <laughs> you know, the other day I was in the car, and Pigeon shit came in, and came on. <laughs> Cause I just have my thing, my thing came, came in, in the car. Yeah. <laughs> this is all it's I had my, uh, my radio on shuffle or my iPod on shuffle. That one came on. I was all like, smells Davis. I was all, dude, we were kind of killing it right there. <laughs> <laughs> like, I didn't want to like say it like that. But, yeah. <laughs> oh, man. I have to ask about Mastodon. Um, you played a show in Atlanta, and the guys from Mastodon came out. Yeah. yeah. How yeah. was that experience? I don't think they expected you to be your own entity away from Omar's, from what I read. <laughs> no, no, no. Yeah, that's what that's what Brent was saying. Rom though, he was he um he didn't catch most of our set. He caught like the last couple songs or whatever. And um and he was saying that he had that he had already, you know, watched our videos on YouTube and all this shit, so 
I guess he already. I guess he knew. Yeah, because yeah, yeah, because Brand, yeah. Brand was just you know he at, at first he was like, oh that's cool, so oh you guys are playing it, and then when we were done, he was like, holy shit. Mm-hmm. You know, like he's like, you guys have been, you know, I'm guessing you've had it together for a while. Like, yeah, he was yeah. like, I've been, I've been working on something kind of like this you know, some <laughs> side project thing that for me has been it wanting to it was do. One of those things uh, I hadn't noticed that, that he had been watching part of the set, and then I saw him in the corner. I was like, oh shit, I better play good, dude. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we've been big fans of this for a while, so yeah. I mean, like that's that's definitely very complimentary, and like uh, it was it was nice to have them there. Yeah, yeah for sure. Yeah, and you had thought it masked it on as one of the original band names. It was one of the. It was one of the names. I think I, I brought that one in, mm-hmm. but I hadn't. You know, I, we hadn't heard of them. And then Monolith was another one. Yeah. And that was the one we went with that one. And Monolith, then it was yeah. funny because then you know we we're like, oh, there's a band name masked on. It's a good thing we didn't go with that yeah. one. Then. But then we found there was like four other bands from Texas named Monolith. Oh, so. yeah. <laughs> so we we went from that? finding one band with the name to finding were four. We, were we in like um, at um, um, that, that record store in Austin? We we're all, who is this? And we somehow or another we found out that that band was Monolith. Monolith that's right. Yeah. 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 <laughs> at Waterloo, yeah, we were at Waterloo. Was all like, Monolith? Don't they have kegs there some days? <laughs> oh, I swear. For really? Yeah, water for sale really? or like no, you, you like buy you get, because oh, you know in Austin it's weird you can drink like on the, within an establishment. No, like you can drink outside as long as it's not on the sidewalk or I forget what exactly. Oh really? Yeah, yeah it's some super weird shit like that. Um, yeah. Aside from Mastodon, what are some bands that are out there right now that you admire? Battles for sure. Battles. Yeah. Um, Lightning Bolt. Lightning Bolt. Yeah, they're sick. great. Um. One day is lying. They're pretty good. I like them a lot. We saw them at Coachella. Erica Badu. Erica oh, Badu. Badu, yeah. yeah. What do you think of other instrumental bands? Um, Animals as Leaders. They're they're good. I haven't heard them, man. You should check them out. They've, I feel like there are a lot of instrumental bands that are coming up. About time. <laughs> yeah. There's just a lot. I think instrumental music is really resonating with people. Um, um, I think... I think definitely, inevitably, people's cha- and taste changes over the years, you know, and like, um, I think where uh, you've had a lot of people listening to more punk rock, I, I guess, as of recently, not necessarily like like old school punk rock or anything like that, but just punk rock in general, like, you know, a different kind of uh, rock music. Uh, I think your average person listens to things that, you know, they didn't listen to like 10 years ago. And so like this is, if it's the next thing is instrumental stuff where people get into it because they, you know, uh, their musical taste is changing, then I'm definitely all for it. But I, I, I don't know if I've necessarily seen more instrumental bands, but I've seen better ones. That's definitely for sure. I mean, there's definitely a lot of really good instrumental bands out, out there that, that, you know, we've either played with or you know, that um, that are coming up, you know, that we've seen, and there's, you know, a lot of talent out there, so. so it's not like, I used to really, like, just the fact that we never had a singer was, like, a little bit intimidating for me, you know, just, you know, trying to play shows and stuff, but then, you know, you, you do see bands like Russian Circles on those, you just have a good following, yeah. so it's just like, there you go, you know, there, there's some people out there that, that are digging it. You know, I, th- I think if you're going to be an instrumental band in general, though, you have to step that notch up, because, I mean, you can't just play the... The average kind of stuff that you know, you know, four chord type of stuff that like, I mean that's good, you know that st- that type of music is good and we listen to that kind of stuff too. But like, um, without a singer, you kind of have other compensation. Yeah, yeah, you, you can't do. Sound yeah. like music without minus vocals. the singer. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's like the tracks before the singer sang on it. Or yeah. Whatever. yeah, I mean it's good to lock down like a you know a steady beat that like you can kind of nod your head to and stuff like that. And you know we love that we, we we do that sometimes you know I mean but it's it's also nice to come up with stuff that I think is you know stuff that you're impressed with you know I think a lot more instrumental bands in general are doing that now that you hear you know or even something like um, you know like Flying Lotus like oh yeah ten Amazing years stuff. ago or something like that you know I don't think he would have been as popular but people now like that's yeah. what they want you they, know yeah, the yeah. sound is different. And and, you know, so people gravitate towards it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. When you write, do you write as if you were writing for a movie, or, or are you painting a picture? Um, I, I Eventually, I would say it ends up that way. At first, it's kind of, you know, we just, you know, doing whatever we can kind of think about, and then after that, it's kind of, like, structured, and, uh, 
is just it, it you know we, it, it not that because we'll have the essential parts it's a little easier to complete you know the puzzle so to say you know it's a little easier to try and uh you know put the song together and and figure out what works and what doesn't work yeah it's like building anything you know if you want to have some i don't know why crazy shit on top or 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 uh yeah something that I don't know, basically you have to have the, the foundation first, you know, so when we start it's just about that and then later we start doing all the all the other stuff, you know, the builds and the stuff that's like, um, yeah, I guess like cinematic or, yeah. or, or... Giving it kind of a voice in its way and adding textures yeah. and stuff. Because, you know, we, without the singer, like, you gotta, you gotta have something there that, so that it's not just, you know, if you were to listen to, I don't know, some some band with the singer, if you were to listen to it without the vocals, you'd be like, it's Something fucking missing. boring. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, because the vocals is like, it's all, yeah, it. they do it, they build it around the vocals, so we kind of have to use, you know, other things to kind of make up for that, so it kind of give does give it, you know, more cinematic, feel or you know something more like a you well, know like a picture when we were younger we thought that that voice was like oh yeah you take a solo then you take a solo <laughs> yeah solo, you know it's like the, the, the can solo only do that for the so voice, many you know you had a wand and you got vowels mm -hmm. and then event, you know now oh, we shit, now boys. we realize that it's you know that's good too but you can't have groove you yeah, know 10 minutes of solos just the, yeah, whole the whole way i mean that's good for like jazz or whatever but people would walk out on us you know so we learned to do you know, to be able to uh, to have that voice, you know, together all doing something or two of us doing something with the other two doing something with the other one doing something. Mm -hmm. yeah. This has been, you know, the whole thing's been a, a learning process. Yeah, we've definitely uh, worked a whole lot more on arranging our music um, as of the, recently. The beauty know. of songwriting. Mm -hmm. Yeah. As to where, but like when we, when we were first a band, you know, say like, for instance, like on uh, Our Delicate or something like that, it was much more about like going into a room and just starting to play something and, and coming up, you know, maybe somebody would come in with an idea and, um, you know, we would just build up off of that and kind of, yeah. you know, for lack of a better word, like jam it, you know what Let I mean? Let it flow and, and yeah. I hope that the listener the would follow part. us. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's not always going to work. Yeah, yeah, it's not. And I mean, we would play shows and we'd play like, I don't know, 20 minute songs like that we're like I mean not everybody wants to sit through that you know and it, it, a lot of people would like to have a little bit more you know changes within within the night so they can see a whole array of, di of music or you know whatever you're doing you know so um, to us it was much more important to to be about the arranging and doing something to where that we got the, the point across really quickly you know um, and so, I mean, I like arranging in this album that we just, you know, just or that, that Marcel, Marcel had produced and everything like that, we, uh, it seems a lot more well arranged and stuff like that. Before the jamming was everything. That's what the band was. Yeah. It was jamming. And now it's like, it's still an important part of, of our sound, but, oh, yeah. but it's not. Everything. It's yeah. not the f yeah. It's not. We it's not the main for, part. You know, the, the, the Beatles and, and Zeppelin and you know any anyone who's good at writing songs. You know, and it's like, cool because like uh, like before we you know when there'd be solos and you just go in just forever and ever. But now that there's actually like changes, you're just like, oh damn, I gotta keep up with that. Mm -hmm. Okay, here it comes. Here it comes. Here it comes. <laughs> Fuck it up. You're just like damn, that was my time. <laughs> now now it's just like there's a good challenge there. Yeah. Does music have to be technical to be powerful, or could you no could it just be uh, super no. simple and? Yeah. It can be, yeah, absolutely. Um, uh, I don't, yeah, I don't think that it has to be technical at all because some and some sometimes uh, technical music, you know, you can it can get lost very easily, and it's not, you know, for me, at least for me personally, music is is kind of like a, it's an, it's an emotional thing, at least you know. Yeah, we we much rather listen to someone who's creative than technical. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you hear a song and, you know, it, yeah, it makes you feel a certain way. You'll get goosebumps the first time you hear it. Sometimes it's as simple as, as a, just one chord change, you know, and you're just like, oh my god. Wait, yeah, yeah, I, just, that I love that part, you'll just rewind it and listen to that one part 40 times, even though it's only four seconds long.